Hello, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you use, um, uh, how you prepare yourself to look after a patient who has a respiratory virus um, that may pose a risk to healthcare workers. So we're going to talk through how you put on uh, personal protective equipment and most importantly, before you put on the personal protective equipment, how you clean your hands and of course when you're finished you need to clean your hands again afterwards. Now when you're preparing to see a patient like this, it's really valuable to have a colleague with you to check that you um, get everything right and uh, to help me with this today I have my colleague Eleanor who is going to check that I'm um, putting on the equipment right. One of the things that's important to say about putting on the uh, equipment is that you're in a safe place putting on the equipment because this is all new material and none of it is contaminated. The reason that the drill of putting it on is so important is that it sets you up to take it off safely. So your colleague, my colleague Eleanor is going to check that I've put it on in a way that supports me later in taking it off uh, without contaminating myself. So the first part is that we're going to, uh, we're going to perform hand hygiene. So if, uh, alcohol rub is what we recommend. And the first step is to um, wet all your hands and then up and down, back of the hands. Make sure you clean the finger webs. Fingertips, both sides, thumb, thumb, palm of the hand, palm of the hand. So we've got our hands clean and to begin with and then the next step then is that we're going to put on uh, the gown. So it's really important um, wherever you're working that you're familiar with the equipment that your hospital has provided for you to use um, before you, the first time you go to see a patient. Uh, who may have infection with the respiratory virus. So if you're new to a hospital, find out what the per personal protective equipment that's provided in the hospital is. Become familiar with it um, and it is useful to um, take it out and put it on and make sure that you know how to use it so that if the situation arises that you have to use it, it's not the first time that you've seen it. For tying the gown, one of the things that you want to be careful of is that you tie the gown at the back or at the side um, but not at the front. We don't want to tie the gown at the front because when we come to the stage of taking this off and we have to loosen the gown, then anything that's at the front may be contaminated and if it's at the back, well then it's protected from contamination to some degree. When you're adjusting the gown and tying it at the top, if you're wearing a shirt like I'm wearing now, what you want to do is make sure that the gown covers the shirt completely and then when you tie the knot at the top, you're able to make sure that your shirt is covered completely um, so that your, risk, your shirt is not at risk of contamination. Okay, so the next step that I'm going to do now is that I'm going to put on the, the mask. Um, and here is a, so I'm going to demonstrate first the use of the surgical mask. Um, and so we want to make sure that the wire is at the top of the mask um, and you apply the mask to your face. It's going to be much easier to do this if you're wearing glasses, if you take the glasses off first because you want to make sure that when you, you don't have bars of glasses between the mask and, and the fittings for the mask in your face. So we apply the mask and we're going to tie the knot at the top. I'm going to tie the straps from the other one also, so up in front of the ears and to tie at the top. And the reason that this is important is because tying at the top like this will make the mask much easier to take off when we get to the stage that we want to remove the mask. So now that the mask is back on, I'm going to put my glasses back on and make sure that the bands of the glasses are outside the, the straps that attach the mask. I'm now going to show you how to put on a respiratory protection mask. So first of all, I'm going to take off my eyeglasses. So the mask that I showed you uh, previously is a surgical mask, which is suitable for um, uh, droplet protection. So when taking look care of a patient who requires droplet precautions. But if you're looking after a patient where airborne precautions are required, then use a different kind of mask. And I'm now going to show you how to use this FFP2, a respiratory protection mask. You would require this um, when you're looking after a patient with a true airborne infectious disease such as measles, chickenpox, 
or tuberculosis, but you would also use this when looking after a patient with a droplet transmitted disease when you're engaged in something that's likely to generate um, aerosols, so aerosol generating procedures. So for this mask, um, we're going to separate the straps before you apply it to your face because this makes it easier. Put the, put the straps over your head and so the lower strap goes down behind the ears, the other strap goes to the top of the head. You put the mask over the face. You need to check that the underside of the mask is fitting under your chin and these masks work if you're clean shaven. You cannot get a good seal if you're not clean shaven. And so we're fitting with both hands that it's fitted closely around the nose. Checking again that there are no folds underneath because this is important to make sure that the mask gives you the seal. If there's a fold, then you need to pick the fold as I'm doing here to make sure that the seal is clear and you want to make sure that the straps, there's no twists or turns in the straps to get the, the protection. So now that the mask is on, the next thing I want to do is check, do a fit check that the mask is giving me the protection that it's intended to do. So I cup my hands together and put them over the mask and breathe out. And if I can feel air coming out anywhere around the sides, then the seal is not correct and I need to adjust the mask until I've got a correct seal. And if you can't get a correct seal, then this mask does not provide you with the respiratory protection that's intended to provide you with. And then you should contact your uh, supervisor um, and it's not safe to go into the room of a person with an airborne disease if you haven't checked that you've achieved a satisfactory um, seal around the mask. And now I'm going to put my glasses back on, again, making sure that the um, bands of the glasses are outside the straps of the mask. Now, although I'm wearing eyeglasses, eyeglasses do not provide full protection against, uh, do not provide the required protection against droplet transmitted diseases. So I am going to wear these goggles and again, making sure that the straps, that the bands of the goggles are outside the straps of the mask. The next step um, is that I'm going to put on my gloves. So I'm going to choose a size of glove that is comfortable for my, uh, for my hand. And then we put on the gloves. We need to make sure that the glove is brought up over the cuff of the gown so that I have full protection against the risk of contamination of my skin. And similarly on the other side, we're going to put on the glove. And bring it up over the cuff of the gown so that I have full protection for the skin. So I'm now ready uh, to go into the uh, room of a, a patient who requires droplet precautions. Um, I'm now wearing the surgical mask. One point that's really important to emphasize is that if I'm going to be in caring for that patient for an extended period of time, I may need to change my gloves and perform hand hygiene a number of times during the care episode as per the five moments of hand hygiene. So it's not one pair of gloves for all of the time that I'm caring for the pa patient. It may be necessary to change the gloves as required to conform to good practice, good standard precautions practice in relation to infection prevention and control. Before I go in, just to make sure that everything is okay, I'm going to call on my colleague, um, Eleanor, who's going to come and check that, there are, uh, that the PPE is correctly applied and that I'm, I'm ready to go in. Thank you, Eleanor. Hi, Martin, how are you? Just have a look at you now before you go in. Yeah, your collar is tight. The mask looks okay. The goggles are out. The sleeve, the goggles are outside the mask. Yeah, and your cuffs are in. Yeah, you're good to go. Thank you. If you have a room with an ante room as we have in here, then you can come into the ante room to take off your PPE. If you don't have an ante room, then you um, remove your PPE with the exception of your mask in the patient's room and then you leave the, leave the patient room. But if you have the facility of an ante room, then you can come into the ante room to remove your PPE and, and we'll start the process here. So I'm going to ask my colleague Eleanor, who is going to check uh, that I'm taking off the PPE uh, appropriately and who will call my attention to it if there's anything that I make, if I make an oversight in any way. And again, the key thing to remember about what we're doing now is that this is one of the areas where there is a risk of contamination of the hand. In relation to respiratory viruses, it's really critical to understand that the biggest risk is that the virus gets onto the mucosa of the mouth, the nose or the eye. So 
if anything goes wrong at any step through this process, then if I clean my hands, um, I'll use the alcohol hand rub, at any stage that I'm concerned that something might not be quite right, then that maximizes my protection. Because even if the virus gets onto my skin, as long as I clean my hands and the virus is inactivated before my hands goes to my face, nose or mouth, then that manages the risk of infection. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take off is the gloves. When you're taking off gloves, um, the part of the glove most likely to be contaminated is the front of the gloves, which is likely to be in, in, in contact with the patient. So we go high up at the back and pull the glove down without touching any more of the outside of the glove than I need to. Then I pull it in to my hand, and now I'm going to go to the inside of the glove so that I'm not touching the outside of this glove. And pull down the glove into one piece and that's now ready to discard into healthcare risk waste. Okay, so now that I've removed the gloves, the next step that I want to do is to decontaminate my hands. So again, I'm going to wet all the surfaces of my hands, up and down, back, back. Finger ribs are done, fingertips, fingertips, thumb, thumb. And again, to repeat, if at any stage in the process you're concerned that something has gone wrong, um, you can do your hands. You can't do your hands too many times in this situation because that is your, your key protection. So the next step I'm going to do now, my hands are decontaminated so I can be confident that there isn't any virus in my hands and I'm now going to take off my goggles. But I, again, I don't want to touch the front of the goggles because if I got splashed with virus, the virus is going to be on the front. So I touch the goggles, I get the bands of the goggles at the back and then I lift off the goggles and they go into healthcare risk waste. So when it comes to removing the gown, again, to remember the principle of what we're trying to do. If there's virus in the gown, the virus is likely to be at the front of the gown. So what I want to do is to avoid, to the greatest degree possible, any contact with the front of the gown. Again, if I do have contact with the front of the gown, the thing to do is to pause and clean your hands because that's the key part of your protection. So the reason we tied the gown at the back was that I can release the gown from the back without touching the front of the gown. And I can release the gown at the back without touching the front of the gown. And then I'm going to take off the gown. I'm not touching the front of the gown because that's where virus is most likely to be if I have contaminated myself. So we take the gown off without touching the front of the gown. And folding the gown away from me and putting the gown into healthcare risk waste. Um, I'm, I've now gotten um, off the personal protective equipment with the exception of the mask. If I'm in a patient room without an anti room, I'm now going to leave the room and I'm going to take the mask off outside of the room. If I have an anti room like his, th this and the patient is now in another room, well then I can take the mask off here. So this does depend a little bit on the circumstances in which you're working. So I'm taking off my surgical mask. Well, the first thing I have to do in my case is I have got to take off the glasses. Now, although the glasses were protected, I'm still going to take them off with the band from the back and put them down on a surface that I know to be clean because it's not been in the, in the patient area. And then to remove the mask again, if there's virus in the mask, the virus is going to be on the front of the mask. So I want to keep my hands away from that as much as possible. So at the back, I just catch the mask and it lifts off cleanly and it goes directly into healthcare risk waste. Uh, so we've demonstrated uh, the removal of the surgical mask, which is uh, the mask that provides you appropriate protection in a situation where there's a risk of droplet transmission. In a situation where there's a risk of, um, of transmission by the airborne route or a droplet diseases where one is engaged in an aerosol generating procedure, then the appropriate protection is provided by a respiratory protection mask, such as the FFP2 mask that I'm wearing now. And then um, the procedure for removing the PPE is very similar, whether you're wearing an FFP2 mask or a surgical mask, except that we now come to the stage where they, we're doing that um, second from last step, which is the removal of the mask. So I'm outside of the patient care zone at this point. I'm taking off my eyeglasses and putting them down on a clean surface. 
and I'm now ready to remove the, the mask. So again, I do not want to touch the front of the mask because if there's contamination of the mask, that's where the contamination is likely to be. So I've li lifted the straps and I'm moving the mask away from my face without any contact with the front of the mask. The mask goes into healthcare risk waste um, and I've now disposed of all the items of PPE. And then the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to decontaminate my hands because if I made a mistake taking off the mask and if for any reason I've contaminated my hands with virus, well, the virus can't infect me through the skin. If I clean my hands properly at this stage, then I will inactivate any virus on my hands and then that protects me in the event that I contaminate my mucous membranes. And so now my hands are decontaminated and now I'm ready to put on my eyeglasses again and the procedure is complete. Just to thank my colleague um, Eleanor who checked when I was taking off the PPE. One point that's worth making is that in this sitting I was taking off the PPE in an ante room so um, my colleague Eleanor was not wearing any uh, personal protective equipment. If I was in a situation where there was no ante room and I was removing the PPE in the patient area, well then a colleague could give you a visual single signal through a window, but clearly they would not be in the patient care area unless they were wearing the appropriate PPE. Thanks very much, Ellen. So again, if anything goes wrong at any stage, hand hygiene is the single most important step in protecting you against the risk of infection when you're caring for a patient with a respiratory disease and indeed the single most important step in caring and protecting yourself when you're caring for a patient with almost any um, transmissible infectious disease. <laughs>